Happy New Year, everyone. Welcome to the first Immigration.ca live stream of 2017. My name is Andrea, and I'm here with immigration lawyer Colin Singer. Colin is managing partner of Immigration.ca here in Canada. As always, we're going to be discussing the latest developments in immigration news with you today. Always, please, you know, if you have any friends that you think might be interested in this video, please do share this with them. Well, Colin, we have a new immigration minister. Big changes yes. uh, that have taken place. Yesterday, of course, uh, Canada announced a, a new immigration minister, uh, the individual, the Honorable uh, Ahmed Hussein. Uh, he's a practicing lawyer for the last five years, but he has a strong history in uh, public advocacy work and public service. He's a former refugee claimant from Somalia. Mm -hmm. uh, so he came to Canada in 1993, and it's quite interesting that Canada now has, uh, as an immigration minister, uh, an individual who's very, very familiar uh, with uh, Canada's immigration system. Uh, a practicing lawyer. Uh, he obviously uh, became a, a late practitioner, uh, went to University of Ottawa mm -hmm. and became licensed uh, to practice in 2012 or 13, I think 12. Uh, so he doesn't have a long history as, as a lawyer, but I think what's important is he has uh, an accolade. Uh, he's got a long history and accolades uh, in public service. So uh, f very interesting yes, um, very. You know, uh, from, from many perspectives. Uh, what can we expect? Well, uh, realistically, um, the heavy lifting mm -hmm. uh, that was done uh, has already been done. Exactly, yes. The heavy lifting in terms of immigration policy uh, has really been done by the former immigration minister, John McCallum, who uh, will be appointed as ambassador to China. He has a, a long history in, in economic policy, uh, has uh, worked uh, in the immigration field for two years now. Uh, so what we see uh, really is uh, a continuation of, of government initiatives that were put into place in 2016 uh, through uh, many uh, modifications. So uh, why don't we cover some of those? Okay, I mean, obviously you can find these on our website, uh, the new section. So if you go to 2016, Year in Review, Part 1, Permanent Residence and Citizenship. So that's where you can find it on the website. But to start, uh, we can start with parents and grandparents sponsorship. Well, that, that's uh, a really uh, important change that uh, is really a continuation now and a rollout uh, of a really important development. Uh, parents and grandparents uh, have, have a new system in place. Uh, previously, it was first come, first serve. Now, it's, it's a lottery system. Yes. And, you know, in the last three years, what we had was a, a rush to submit applications for 10,000 positions. Uh, 10,000 applications were, 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 were admitted into the system. Uh, so it became unfair for, for many people. People were queuing in long lines, yeah. uh, all to have a, a place uh, that would really uh, go quickly in, in a matter of hours. Right. So uh, I think it, it, it would. It, I think many people voiced concerns that it was an unfair system. So yeah. now what we have, uh, and it's a, a new way of doing things in terms of uh, this category of, of immigration, right. is uh, we have a basic lottery system. Uh, so you've got the the the, 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 the caveat here and, and the call out here is you have until February 2nd, uh, if you're looking to bring in a parent or a grandparent, you have until February 2nd to, to, uh, submit. to yeah. submit an online form uh, and then uh, the government hasn't announced when they'll do this, but they'll be selecting 10,000 uh, people or 10,000 applications. Right, random uh, a random selection of 10,000 uh, applications, and they'll be given 90 days to perfect their application. So uh, that that's that's the first uh, let's say a continuation of new policy that the new minister really is is going to oversee through a, a, an experienced team in Ottawa. Uh, the other the other major initiative. Uh, family sponsorship. Family sponsorship really uh, is is not uh, a, a major new rules that have come in place. Uh, we're we're waiting for the dependency uh, age definition to come into place and change. Uh, that that hasn't been done yet. But what we're really seeing is uh, processing an efficient, more efficient processing, uh, a new way of processing family class. Um, spousal and, and partnership applications. Uh, the, the, the stated goal is to process applications in 12 months. Now, right. 
That's something that would be uh, hard to believe, considering where they're coming from. Uh, in some cases, they're waiting four or five years for applications to be processed. So, uh, if if they can, uh, if this new minister with with an established team in Ottawa can can actually put into place uh, mechanisms that that reach uh, a significant percentage of applications that are processed in 12 months, that would be that would be brilliant. It would be, and then so bring this brings us to economic immigration. A major initiative that the new minister really is, is going to carry forward from, from developments that took place in 2016 uh, concerns the uh, economic immigration. The major uh, category inside that is the express entry system, uh, covers uh, uh, skilled workers and skilled trades and, and, and other uh, subcategories. But the goal is to bring in uh, 73,700. Uh, immigrants. That includes family dependents. Uh, so if you look at what that translates into, we obviously have a system now with an invitations to apply. Uh, to reach 73,700 immigrants in the express entry system uh, under the economic class, uh, you're talking about 2.2 dependents per application. You're looking at about 33,500 invitations to apply. Uh, last year, we had uh, about uh, 27, uh, 30,000, somewhere in there. I don't have the exact numbers, but it's about 30,000 uh, uh, total um, uh, invitations that were, that were issued. Uh, so we're on track to, to increase uh, the number of invitations. But the reality is, in order for the government to, to have 33,500 main applicants yeah. apply for permanent residence, everyone knows that there's a very big drop-off rate. Yeah. Uh, it's about 30, 25 to 40 percent, somewhere in there. We're waiting for the annual report for 2016. Uh, we will expect to see uh, a still a significant drop-off. So in order for the government to bring in 33,500 main applicants, they have to issue a lot more invitations to apply than 33,500. We estimate that they need to invite about 50,000, 52,000 invitations over the next 12 months. Uh, why is it so much more than uh, the 27 to 30,000 that were issued in 2016? The reason is because there was the uh, previous system still had quite a backlog, but most of that has been processed. So now we're dealing with really the express entry system that's going to account for the majority of the immigrants coming under that category. Right. Uh, we're probably going to see uh, about 14 to 16 draws in the next six months. Uh, the government is on a mission right now to uh, seemingly uh, get the numbers up, uh, see what the new uh, drop-off rate is in terms of how uh, 90 days makes a difference versus what it was before to perfect an application was 60 days. So we expect to see a, a ramped up number of invitations over the next six months. Uh, so we also expect to see uh, CRS scores averaging below 460. Uh, that's uh, quite a big difference is, yes. from what we were having last year. Yes. Uh, and in and, and 2015 when the system first started. Uh, so you also have, of course, under express entry that major changes that took place and the new minister is dealing with uh, really following through uh, with these uh, previous initiatives. Uh, we have um, uh, reduced points for a job offer, which used to be 600. Which now it's uh, 200. 200 or, or 50 for the vast majority of, of individuals who will uh, have access to a labor market impact assessment. If you have an, uh, an employer and you're sponsoring, uh, you're being sponsored to come to Canada, uh, you used to be able to get 600 points. Well, now what you're going to see is lower scores mm -hmm. and a lower weight for an approved job offer. And of course, you also have uh, one of the hallmarks of, of the changes that were done in November of 2016, you have points being issued uh, for Canadian education. So that, that covers the initiatives that were done in 2016 under the economic class. Right. And then bringing us to citizenship, this is, uh, so we have Bill C-6. Bill C-6 was put in uh, in uh, 2015. Uh, it was approved by Parliament. 
uh, it went to the Senate, and it went through first reading in the Senate in October of 2016. Uh, what we're waiting for is a second reading. Uh, Senate is reconvening at the end of January. We haven't seen uh, the agenda item, including uh, the new bill, C-6, the new uh, Citizenship Act. Uh, so we're waiting to see. We expected it to be implemented last year. Uh, this hasn't been done. It's being stalled. Uh, it's not on the agenda item as of recently. So we hope and we expect, uh, and I'm sure the government hopes as well, uh, that the new citizenship bill will be debated again in the Senate within the next uh, few months at, at, the, at the most. Uh, expect it to be on the agenda uh, quite soon. Uh, and then we can expect that um, the major tenets of the new citizenship law that they're putting in place, they're going to lower the period of, of residency that you need to qualify, and they're going to repeal the previous requirement of having uh, 183 days in each of the qualifying years. So, uh, and other important elements uh, are, are included in the package of, of Bill C-6. Uh, so that, that were, those were the initiatives. Yes for permanent residents right. that the new minister really is, is going to carry forward that we can expect in 2017. So that's permanent residents. Now this brings us to temporary residents. Right. Uh, I mean, there were some interesting developments uh, of primarily affecting foreign workers. Uh, we can expect to see further initiatives, uh, a, a range of initiatives. Um, uh, we're expecting to see a rollout of a new global skills visa that will affect the technology sector and perhaps other sectors. In a nutshell, the goal is to be able to process applications for work permits very rapidly. Uh, there's also talk for a 30-day work permit uh, that uh, workers will be able to use uh, on a multiple basis inside a 12-month period that'll eliminate the need to have to keep applying for a new work permit. So they're looking to uh, do things more efficiently. They're putting in programs that'll allow uh, workers to come in hopefully very quickly because, again, the, the, the theme has been long processing delays on, on the foreign worker, uh, LMIAs, uh, depends which province you are in. Uh, there, there's a wide range of variances. Okay. I mean, we've touched on this briefly earlier, but I mean, so we, we touched on the LMIA issue. So employers now are concerned. Uh, they're concerned with regards to the points. Big concerns uh, on the part of employers, and I've spoken to many colleagues across the country, uh, and some of our clients and employers are, are very concerned uh, with being able to retain their workers. Uh, when you're only getting 50 points for the vast majority of workers, uh, it, it, uh, whereas you used to get 600 points, uh, there will be many workers, uh, executives, management personnel, who are in their 40s, uh, late 30s and mid 40s, uh, and perhaps even older, uh, sitting with an LMIA, but it's only worth 50 points, they'll be very hard pressed to get Canadian permanent residence. Yeah. So uh, many people are, are voicing concern that it's going to impact and it's going to harm the ability to retain um, excellent employees. Uh, so the answer to that, and I think what, what people need to start working on, is, is work on the provinces. The provinces need to start putting in good policies that are going to help their employers, because each province has their own labor market requirements. Employment does fall under uh, the jurisdiction of the provinces. So rather than the, the uh, defaulting to the federal government to do all the heavy lifting and all the, all the nuts and bolts, it's really up to the provinces to put in their own policies and programs that will help employers retain their, their candidates. Uh, in the worst case scenario, the employees, the employers will be able to keep renewing work permits, uh, the cumulative uh, time period where, where uh, workers were, were permitted to stay in Canada, used to be four years as a maximum for most categories, but not all, that's been removed. So really what you're going to be faced with is provinces need to start putting pressure on two fronts. Put pressure on Ottawa to increase the allocations for under each program, under each provincial nomination program, and it's really up to the provinces. As I might say, the Quebec government has done quite well. 
in putting in excellent policies and programs. Uh, I mean, there's flaws with it as well, but they're so far ahead of all the other provinces. It, it's, it's quite remarkable. Uh, so I think that the provinces need to, let's call it, invest in the employment market, help employers retain, and uh, surely there'll be concerns on retention, but there's not a, a short-term solution. Uh, the reason why they put in this system and removing points uh, for a job offer, it became a system where it was, you needed a job offer, you needed to be working in Canada in order to get Canadian permanent residence. Right. That's not the system uh, that, that uh, the government wanted. That's not the system uh, that uh, employers wanted. Uh, and, and so what you now have really is a system where the value of a, of a labor market impact assessment still can have a very important difference. Uh, 50 points for, for many people uh, will, for someone who's going to be at the 380, 390, 400, 410, it'll make a big difference. So that's the concerns and, and I think that's what, what employers need to do. Put pressure on government in their own provinces, put in your own programs. That's great. So finally, express entry. So there's been two express entry draws this year. So 6,000 people have actually already received invitations to apply for permanent residence. So the first draw was on January 4th, and 2,902 people received invitations to apply. The score needed was 468. And yesterday, there was also a draw, and the score actually went down. It went down to 459, and 3,334 people received invitations. 6,000 and, and such uh, in one week. It's the most ever uh, under the express entry system. Uh, it's clear indication from our perspective. It's clear indication that there's movement now to get people into the system, issue invitations, because it's a tall order to bring in 72,700 individuals. Uh, it's a tall order. It, it seems to be, uh, given where we've come from. Uh, and so I think we're going to see uh, as I said earlier, somewhere between 14 and 16 draws in the next six months, uh, perhaps uh, uh, a much bigger number of invitations than we've seen previously. Uh, and I think uh, what, what the message I guess people want to uh, take note is, now's a good time. To apply. Now's a good time to apply. Yes. Uh, you need to uh, begin uh, working and, and gathering, you know, uh, the language tests that are that are mandatory, uh, and getting education equivalencies because these are these are time consuming. So Canada seems to be in a, in a spot now uh, where individuals who are not working in Canada, uh, who have an interest in relocating here, now's a very uh, opportune time. Uh, to consider applying for permanent residence if you're a foreign, uh, if you're if you're overseas, uh, that that's pretty much I would I would say is is yes. is, is a, a takeaway. And our website, um, a lot of you probably noticed, our website has changed. It's more user friendly, and we do hope that it's easier for you to navigate the news articles, the videos, and so on. Obviously, we love to hear from you, so we do, we've been receiving lots of positive feedback. Uh, so if you have any feedback, we also love to hear from you with regards to that. And follow us on social media, so Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. Uh, I, I mean, we have on our website the free online evaluation form. So if you are looking to come to Canada, as we discussed, it's, now is a great time to apply. We can go through your qualifications and get back to you and let you know what your options are. We provide excellent, excellent employment, employment search. search. I, mean, I, I mean, we're seeing that. A yes. lot of our clients are getting employment. Yes. We're having a lot of uh, candidates receiving invitations to apply on the strength of the job offers that they have. Some are working on work permits, uh, but uh, a lot of our clients are receiving invitations now. Uh, so uh, we, we're providing excellent assistance, not just on the immigration side, but on the employment side through our in-house global recruiters of Montreal. Uh, for employers, uh, I want to really go out and say, we're in a position and we do help a number of employers and we put together both recruitment and the immigration side of things through our in-house uh, Global Recruiters of Montreal at www.grnmontreal.com. All our fees are fixed fees. So we're not taking commissions. Uh, we're charging fees to an employer that covers both immigration and employment search recruitment. So uh, we'll, we'll work with the employer. 
will help them uh, put together an, uh, an advertising campaign that will meet the immigration requirements. We're really knowledgeable on, on the, uh, the ways on putting together effective marketing campaigns to recruit excellent candidates. So you probably won't find that uh, anywhere else, I would venture to say. Uh, so I, I encourage employers, uh, if you have an interest in bringing in excellent candidates, we have a great uh, uh, access point to many candidates that you might be looking for. Um, and next live stream, what's yeah, that? Yeah, exciting news, it'll be next Thursday. So next Thursday, please stay tuned. Uh, we'll be having our next live stream. And I think what we're going to try to do on the next live stream is really focus uh, next Thursday uh, at 11 a.m. We're going to focus really on questions and answers. Uh, so we're going to invite everyone to uh, complete uh, their questions. Go to our discussion forum. Tell yes. them about that. So on our website, immigration.ca, we have a discussion forum. So please do leave your questions there. So hopefully we can answer them next week. Did we cover everything? I do believe so. Uh, I want to just really emphasize to everyone, uh, follow us on Facebook, follow us on LinkedIn. Our LinkedIn uh, corporate page uh, is uh, uh, an area that we do uh, engage with a lot of people. Um, and uh, encourage everyone uh, to uh, dialogue with us. We, we, we go out to great lengths to work with you and answer your questions where we can. Uh, and our discussion forum as well. Uh, we encourage people to uh, complete uh, their questions on our discussion forum for next Thursday. And we'll uh, do our best to select the best questions. Great. Well, we'll see you next Thursday. And thank you very much for joining us. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. Uh, see you soon.